Hey, I'm Natalie Casey, Diamond Ring Beachbody Coach, and I am talking today about how I encourage my spouse, my husband, to eat healthy, and the question I get asked a lot, is he vegan? No, he is not vegan. Um, he, by nature, is not one to want to eat super healthy, like many husbands. A little bit about my story. When I first went vegan, I did so because I saw friends of mine who were vegan. And they looked great. They felt great. All they ever talked about was how great they feel and how happy they were that they made this change. I wanted to try it out and see what it was all about. Which for me, that was huge because I'm not one to be too curious and try new things. But I had something really pulling me towards wanting to try this. So I said I was just going to do it for 21 days. I told my husband that as a compromise, I would put turkey burgers in the freezer for him and allow him to choose three times a week for me to make a meat meal for him. All he had to do was let me know in advance the week before when I was doing my shopping what it was that he wanted, and it just required a little planning on his part. Well, he didn't do that. He's not much of a planner. I think he really enjoys the fact that I do certain things, like I cook for him. That's something he doesn't have to think about, something he doesn't have to worry about. He knows that there's always going to be food here for him, and there's always going to be something made. So he didn't really take initiative, and that was before I connected to my moral and ethical reason for being vegan. So I would just like, you know, if I was making stir fry for my son and I, like a veggie stir fry, I would just make some chicken for him on the side for him to throw into his stir fry, stuff like that. And then I watched a documentary that changed my life and I couldn't like touch meat anymore and I couldn't cut it up. It just really bothers me um, because, you know, I do respect life and I do have very real reasons. and reasons I'm very emotionally connected to, to being vegan. So he wasn't planning and I had this other hurdle standing in the way. So I kind of just stopped and he did not eat what I made for a very long time, but now he does. So how did I get there? Um, in marriage, it seems to me that everyone's favorite advice to give you is to pick your battles. And I think with food, they're telling me that to like get me to back off, but they're actually um, instilling the opposite in me because my husband obviously matters greatly to me. And he wasn't the healthiest growing up. He was um, really, really overweight. And then he went to college and was just living your single guy bachelor life. Um, he was a star on the chip strip, which is the party district in Buffalo. And by star, I mean he was out there all the time. He was hosting crazy parties at his house, downing cases of beer. I mean, I never saw that side of him because literally the day I met him, like, he shed that. Like, it's like a joke that I have that he, like, went in chameleon mode and, like, stopped being like that. Probably because he knew that if he acted that way in front of me, I would be like, you are an idiot. Get away from me. <laughs> So, I mean, that's kind of how our story evolved. Anyways, this is a battle I pick. This is a battle that I take very seriously, and this is a battle that I will never stop picking. So, how does our marriage endure that? Well, I'm not just going psycho, like, screaming at him. Even though there are heated debates about food in our house, I approach it very, I don't want to say gently, because nothing I'm passionate about gets approached gently. But, you know, when if it's getting a little too heated, I will say to him, you know, I'm not doing this to control you. I'm not doing this for any bad reason. The reason why I am picking this battle, the reason why I am trying to make you see it my way is because I care about you and because I want you to be around for Liam, our son, and to be active with me and, you know, just to live a healthy life. For my husband in particular, he is a police officer. And health-wise, police officers have a lot of statistics against them. They are at high risk for heart disease, um, tons of stuff, just 
a lot. I mean, with their long hours, with the stress of their job, um, not getting a lot of sleep, working just really, really long hours that aren't planned for. It's not uncommon for my husband to have eight hours tacked onto his shift that he never planned for. We're always kind of planning for it because we know it happens a lot, but as far as like food wise, it's really hard to plan for that. And they can't always like, they don't have like a fridge they can go back to to get their food. Um, so we are just trying to be smart. Like I try to explain to him, you know, if you're going out at work, try to go into Chipotle or Wegmans because those are two options around us that I know even if he doesn't get a low calorie meal, he's going to get something that's made with whole foods and is nutritious. So that's really important to me. And I try to, I try to drill that into him as much as I can. Like if you want like once a week to go eat something, like if your friends at work are going to lunch or dinner or something, like by all means go for it. But I don't want it being an everyday thing. So that's something that's really important to me as a police wife. Another thing is that my husband, one of our biggest battles is that he will drink 32 plus ounces of diet pop in one sitting. So I try to put research in front of him, which if your husband is anything like mine, he is really stubborn, really stubborn. He'll say, oh, I don't care about that. That's not going to happen to me. But as Liam Patrick would do, hmm, he gets thinking about it. And I notice around this time that these conversations come up, he's not putting the stuff in his body that we just talked about. So basically he's really stubborn and he will never admit that I'm right, but his actions will change. Um, and I know, I know he's listening to me and I know he's hearing me and I know that he's thinking about it, especially when I say stuff like, when I point out during, our heated arguments about food that, you know, I'm not doing this to control you. I'm not doing this for any reason other than the fact that I care about you and our son freaking adores you and I want you around for him. Like, and me, that's the most important thing. So I think showing your intentions is really, really important. I'll leave you guys with this. There's no magic pill. There's no quick fix. It is being a leader in your own family, leading by example, explaining why this is important to you and why they're important to you, and putting facts in front of them. Guys like to see facts. They like to see, you know, research. Like that's, from my experience, that's just what works. So I'm sorry that I don't have any like secret or fix for you, but the best thing I can tell you is just keep doing what you're doing. Be consistent. You know, I do throw down this now that we've been vegan for a while. Like, you need to eat what I'm making you because I'm going out of my way to find, like, guy-friendly vegan recipes. And sometimes they take, like, three hours to make. And if I'm doing that, like, you better bet your ass you're eating it because <laughs> I just – I don't fly that way. Like, if I'm going out of my way for you, that's just basic respect. Like, eat what I make you. So yeah, he'll have like another snack later sometimes or whatever, but I don't really care about that. But, and that's just like sending a message to our son too. Like as a parent, you are, your child adores you. Like anyone who's a parent can tell you like they look for your praise. They look to see what you're doing to see what they should be doing. So that's another thing. If Brett has pop at dinner, like there's nothing I can do to stop him. All I can ask is that he puts it in like a dark plastic cup. So Liam doesn't see that he's drinking pop. I mean, it's nothing crazy, but you know, it's just really about taking baby steps. So I hope this helped you guys. I'm sorry it was a little long, but you know, when I first started my journey, I was very, very upset about this. And, you know, as soon as you learn about food and you learn about what's in your food, the worst thing is seeing someone you care so deeply about, like basically poisoning themselves with food. So just keep doing what you're doing and hopefully your spouse will come around. There's no guarantees, but the best thing you can do is keep conversations open, explain to them why, and show them that you have good intentions and just lead by example. Bye guys.